Hi, this is Jorge Economics. In the last video, we looked at a simple explanation of how in a socialist economy, in a big government economy, the citizens suffer. The citizens lose living standards because they have less resources, less production, less wealth, and thus lower living standards. In this video, we're going to build upon the fatal flaws of socialism on top of it being a bit of a pyramid scheme as we saw in the last video where the government can just take resources to benefit themselves. We're going to look at how socialism destroys societies, right? So socialism has a 100% failure rate. It, it has always failed and it will always fail. And I'm going to explain why. Exchange is the building block of a society, right? Why? Because I don't have everything I need. If I need to get food, if I need to get a bed, if I need to get toilet paper, I need to find someone who has it and exchange with them to get what I desire, to, to satisfy my needs. So think about when you were younger and your parents would give you pocket money for doing chores. Why would they do that? Well, your parents knew that you didn't like mowing the lawn. You didn't like raking the leaves and washing the dishes. So to get you to do something you didn't want to do, they gave you, in exchange, something you wanted, which was money. Why? Because you can use that money to buy stuff you like. You can use your pocket money to buy things that actually make you happy. So in exchange for you doing something you didn't want to do, you're getting something you want. You're being incentivized to exchange. That is the essence of capitalism. The idea that we need to incentivize people to exchange with each other so society can prosper. That's profit and loss, right? You make a profit. I'm profiting by doing something I don't want to do. In socialism, that incentive is destroyed because people can't make profit. So if the incentive to exchange has been destroyed because now people can't make profit, well, what's going to happen? There's going to be theft and violence. There's going to be mass murder. Think about it. If you're a farmer and the government has said, look, you can't make profit selling your cattle, selling your agriculture, selling your food. Well, what are they going to do? They're going to stop producing. They're not going to be exchanging with people. So all these people that were relying on the farmer so they could buy the cattle with their money, they could buy the food with their money and get the food, they can't do that now. So what are the people going to do? Well, they have to get food. Otherwise, they're going to starve. So they're going to steal. They're going to rely on theft because they still need to feed their family. They still need goods and services. But now they can't exchange. So because they can't exchange, they're going to have to rely on theft and violence. And that's why socialism always leads to mass murder. Because people need to eat, they need to eat, and they need goods and services. And if they can't exchange it, they're going to steal it. So in summation, capitalism leads to prosperity because it encourages people to exchange. The profit and loss that capitalism allows incentivizes people to exchange with each other. So society prospers. Socialism destroys societies because it destroys the incentive to exchange by saying you can't make profit or loss. So what happens? There's no exchange. So there's theft and violence and mass murder because people still need to satisfy their needs. And if they can't satisfy their needs through exchange, they're going to satisfy it through force, through theft and violence. Thank you for watching.